Dear Madam, my name is Abdullah Hussein. I used to work as an interpreter with the United States Army in Iraq. My job was to translate to U.S. soldiers in the international zones. I found a threatening letter that referred to me as the traitor helping the U.S. Army. The words infidel and betraying country, that means, that means I'm a dead man. I need someone who is willing to help us. The trouble I'm facing now is really it's scary. scary. I left my family hoping to solve the problem by the resettlement program. The risk of staying in Iraq is like a death sentence waiting for execution. Thank you for your time. In order for somebody to be resettled, they go through the most rigorous background check process of any single person trying to come to the U.S. You're asked to provide evidence of the worst thing that ever happened to you. Um, and at the end of this, someone looks at a legal standard and they say, do you meet this standard? And depending on what their decision is, you might live or die. For cases of interpreters and translators like Abdullah, who uh, worked with the US military during the occupation of Iraq, they have to verify their employment. And that can be quite difficult sometimes. They absolutely need legal representation. That's kind of the hole that IRAP has tried to fill. I was devastated at that time. I'm, I'm, I'm in this ordeal and they're saying I, I, they don't have my data. If you can't produce evidence of your claim, you know, the US or whatever destination country you're trying to get to might not believe that you're telling them the truth. And yet the paradox is it's incredibly dangerous to have physical documents on you. People like Abdullah are targeted by pretty much everybody. There has to be some way for us to keep records of our clients' files, whether it be medical records, police reports, or proof they work for the Americans. When we got involved, Abdullah was living in Baghdad, away from his family. He was living with friends, trying to just stay out of harm's way, because um, he knew people were looking for him. We then started to work with Abdullah on the application papers. I was really scared. You don't know how to think. What if you leave now? What if you don't leave now? What will happen? But what always gave me that strength is Michael and his team. We were able to persuade IOM to accept these other proofs of employment. That was a major breakthrough for Abdullah and for other translators as well. Finally. Finally, my daughter will maybe never know about what happened. And finally, my wife, Zina, is gonna feel safe again as a family together. Good, good. So good to see you. Very <laughs> good to see you, man. It's very good to see you. Imagine talking to someone for two and a half years. The only thing that you know about him is pictures. I just wanna see him and talk to him and say thank you, like face to face. I think of him as a hero for what he did in Baghdad. He helped our country um, when it wasn't even his country yet. I want to have you all the time. Yeah. To see that and to see him with his wife and daughter and working hard and so appreciative of everything that America has to offer, it's really inspiring um, to see someone who helped this country and now gets to live the American dream. <laughs>